Good morning, faithful people of God. Welcome to Social Faith. Good morning. How are you? It's 7.59 on the top of the hour. Ooh, it's 8 o'clock. And welcome to Social Faith. Ooh, you see me, you see me, I'm here. All is well, all is well. How we doing out there? How's it going? What we doing? How's it, how, how are we feeling this morning? Let me turn my sound down here so I can see what's going on out there. All is well. Yep, we're still talking about pruning, guys. We're still talking about pruning. We're still talking about being successful in our everyday walk in Christ. Um, this is what this is all about. Uh, you need to understand that we have a wonderful journey ahead of us still, and we want to do it successfully. Good morning, Cassandra. Good morning. Good morning, Monette. How are you? Great. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for taking out your time to listen in on what I believe the Spirit has to say today. And what I want you guys to do, if you have it anywhere near you, I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen because I'm going to test your skills this morning. I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to test your skills. I'm going to do a scale this morning, and I want to see where you are. But you don't, 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 don't. I'm not asking you to put it in the chat. This is for your own self-reflectiveness. And I'm going to come out with that as we get along in our conversations this morning. Good morning, good morning. Come on in. Love having you with us. Love having you take a part of our Saturday morning's 30-minute power push-out because this is where we are growing. This is where we are being impacted by the Word of God. This morning, I chose my topic, and I called it Social Emotional Living. Somebody throw that in the chat. Go get your pen and pencil. We're taking a test this morning. Get your pen and pencil so when the others get on, they'll get ready. We're taking a quick little test, and it is not going to be put in the chat. It is for you personally. John chapter 15 says this. John chapter 15. My team is going to throw these scriptures in the, in the chat for you. Um... It says in the New Living Translation, I am the true vine, the true grapevine, I'm sorry. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. I'm reading from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so what? So they will produce even more. What's up? What are you saying? I'm already producing fruit. So now you coming in. <laughs> you coming in cutting on me. Usually you get cut because of something you're not doing or because of something you didn't do right. But the Bible says, the word says, check it out. And he prunes the branches. This is in verse 2. We're in John 15. He says he prunes the branches that do bear fruit. Jesus is saying, he's talking, so they will produce even more fruit. He's talking about Father God. Verse 3 says, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. So one of the ways that we are pruned and purified is by the word of God, about reading the word of God by studying the word of God, by understanding his message, which is the word. You've already been pruned and purified. 
purified. You know how we ladies like to go get these purifications at the spa? Well, I'm telling you this morning, for your spirit, for your soul, this word is a purification method. Listen, I love this. He says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed, cut off, away from the vine. And that cutting means that something else broke you off. Not Jesus, not Father God. For a branch cannot produce, you might have done that for yourself. You might have been in a position and gone through some things and hands down want to take a break. Don't take no break. We got to stay connected to the vine, to the true vine. And you cannot be fruitful. This is wild. You cannot be fruitful. Your life could be looking good. You could be rolling good. You could be living good. You absolutely could be eating good and bear no fruitfulness unless you go through this pruning season. Now, those of you who just came on, hold on. I want you to put in the chat, tell everybody, we're taking a test this morning. Get a paper and a pencil. Get a paper and a pencil or pen or whatever get your journal don't get something you're going to throw away because i want you to look at this we are not going to have to put the results in the chat this is for self-reflection self-reflections so verse five says yes i am the vine i love jesus he makes it plain you are the branches you and i are the branches those who remain in me connected to me Join to me as heirs and joint heirs. Those who are connected to me. Woo, woo, and I in them. This is a two-part relationship because you're connected to me. Then he, because we're connected to him, he is still living in us. Come on through Holy Spirit. Will produce much fruit. You got to get cut though. But you will produce much fruit. Four, 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 apart from me, you can do nothing. So listen up. This is really clear. We don't have to be theologians to understand this. You and I, what we have to do, glory to goodness, is we need to stay connected to the word of God. As long as we stay connected in the word of God, not in religion, but in the spirit spiritual understanding of this word if we understand this word and we stay connected to this word because the bible is telling us in verse five who the true vine is and and we don't have any confusion about that jesus is telling us i am the vine and he gave us a a a, a role we are branches and then he says, those who remain in me, because see, we understand that there's going to be some things that come up in life that makes us back up, that make us cool down, that makes us back away. But Jesus is saying, uh-uh-uh, you don't get to be the branch unless you stay in this with me, unless you understand that we are in this through eternity, unless you realize that you function better with me and not apart from me. I'm telling you, you're looking good, you're loving good, you're riding good, you're feeling good, but if you're not connected to the real vine, listen at this. This 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 woke me up when I saw this one day. Uh verse 5 says, "For apart from me you can do nothing." So not just apart from him, apart from bearing fruit what does it mean apart from bearing fruit i'm going to talk about that this morning because that's a part of our pruning and i titled this social emotional living because we do something in the school systems um we we provide social emotional learning for our students and that is done by focusing on the students needs and focusing on what they don't have and being a source as social workers, being a source to provide access to them for it could be food, it could be housing, it could be clothing, whatever it is, uh, whatever necessities they have. And here's the thing, the ultimate goal here in social emotional learning, which I titled this a twist off of, 
because it's the same principle, if you will. The ultimate goal is you want to get whatever social, emotional issues, you want to get that remedy for the kid so that whatever else they're dealing with, we can aid them with that so that they can be stabilized and effective to get a good classroom education. And I was like, hmm, how we living? How are we living? You know, several, not several, long time ago um, in my saved life, long time ago in my saved life, I wasn't really clear not the long time ago part, but the saved part. I wasn't really clear, because sometimes we think because we are saved and we've come into the knowledge of who Christ is, we know stuff and we know everything, but we don't. It's a gradual process of understanding and getting knowledge. That's why we have to be patient with people when we don't see people acting like quote unquote saved, because we've got to understand everybody is in a growing process and we need to encourage one another to help us bear more fruit. Don't forget, get your pen and your paper because we're going to take a test. Time is not going to run out. This is a self-reflective test and it's coming up soon. So anyway, I was really going through some stuff at this time, and I, I, I was crying out to the Lord, crying out. And I wasn't quoting scriptures. I was snotting and crying and belly aching and complaining and like, why I'm going through this, why I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing, Lord. I'm just talking about me because I could talk about me better than anybody else can. I'm just going through. I pay my tithes and I give my offering. I'm serving. I'm about. I'm about the ten areas of ministry. Five areas. I'm working for the Lord, and I was just going on. And God is so patient with me. Is He patient with you? Put it in the chat. Is God patient with you? Let me know. God is patient with you. He is so patient with me. And he, at that time, He was like, um, "You finish." <laughs> wasn't nothing like oh Barbara I love you and you're going to be alright he was like Holy Spirit was like you finish and I was like what and then he sent me to Galatians chapter 5 and I don't know did I put that in the scriptures I think I did he sent me to Galatians chapter 5 so I want us to go to Galatians chapter 5 because you, you're going through some stuff right now. You are, because you're in this world. And as long as we're in this world, we know that the stuff has, uh, Jesus is overcoming, but he told us we was going to go through it. So don't, you know, don't act like, oh, well, no, everything is great. It might be, but you still, if you're not going through, you're going to go through, or you're just coming out. One of, one of those things are happening because we're living for Christ. And we're going against the stream. When we're living for the Lord, you know, everybody's going this way. But when we're living for God, we're going the other way. So that's some friction going on. But look look at Galatians 5 and 22. And it, he shared this with me. And I had to stop crying the seed. And I had to stop belly aching about it. And he said this to me, you know, you are not walking your life out in the spirit. And I'm like, what does that mean? I'm just simple and plain. I'm like, what? He's like, you're not walking your life out in the spirit. And I've heard people say that before, you know, walking in the spirit. And I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know what that meant. And it was something that we say and and, 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 and you guys, you know, you, you guys are sharp. You know, you, you probably got that understanding, but... It was a minute for me for that to resonate. What does spirit walking mean? So when I look at Galatians 5 and 22, he says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. I'm talking about spiritual pruning. Because we had a whole bunch of stuff, stuff ahead of this scripture. And God didn't take me to all the stuff that I used to be. 
because I was delivered when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, but up, up ahead, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I participated in in the earlier verses. But he, he came to the verse that he wanted me to get. And I, it, it, it revolutionized my life. He said, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What kind of fruit is that? He produces love, joy, peace, patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and there is no law against these things so there is nothing barbara that you could be going through that the production or the developmental developmental because you know we try to help the kids develop in social emotional skills there is nothing, Barbara, that you are going through right now that you think you're about to leave this earth over because it's hurting, it's painful, that you cannot walk it out in the spirit, which is in the fruit of the spirit of our lives, of our lives. I see that, Cynthia. I'm anxious about a lot of things. And so the things that we are anxious about are real live things. But I'm talking to you today about submitting some of those things to prayer to the Spirit of God so that you don't have to carry the anxiousness of it, but that you have a partner in it. Because the Bible tells us that when we are going through, the Lord is right, right there with us. You'll find that in Isaiah 43. He says, when you are going through the fire, when you are going through the waters, I am with you. So we have to grab hold to the word of God, which is Jesus. And as we grab hold to them in our anxious moments, we are going to be developing this fruit that I'm talking about right now. This fruit of love, this fruit of joy, this fruit of peace. So it is with our walk in Christ is where we understand social emotional living it's where we become stabilized the 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 social and the emotional times in our lives and social just means societal kind of things things that we deal with in the world and the emotional piece is things that we deal in our soulish realm don't forget our soulish realm where our will emotion and our intellect remains we have to understand that we have to constantly be matured in those areas so that we are able to effectively function not just effectively people but ethically function and efficiently function so we want to understand that this process of pruning helps us in this world system this societal system to function effectively ethically and efficiently when we are going through tough times you can function like that you can do well when things are well but we're being pruned so when things aren't well we still won't cuss a brother out or a sister we are being pruned so that when we go through things we won't throw in the towel we won't give up we will stay steadfast on course okay now here we go When we are going through tough times, and we do that by walking out the spirit, the life, walking out our life in the spirit of God, fruit is developed in our pruning season. That's when our fruit is developed. When you're having a difficult time in relationships, when you're when you're when you're when having a difficult time in your businesses, and and you're not meeting that profit line, when you're having a difficult time in in in, in raising your kids, fruit is developed, patience is developed, love is developed. Go get your pencil and papers. Go get your pencil and papers. Go get your pencil and papers because I want you to take this 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 little test. Well, I don't want to say test and, and, and make you nervous about it. And again, we're not putting it in the chat. I want you to see it for yourself. Walking by the Spirit means looking to Jesus for our directions. It means understanding and identifying some of the things that we are experiencing. 
Because when we look to Jesus, he has all of the answers that his children, that his heirs, that his joint heirs need. What does the Lord want me to do today? What will honor him? What will please him? It involves me doing that every day, examining our lives. And when we recognize that the emotional area of our lives is on a roller coaster and that society is bearing down on us, then we understand that our emotions need to be refrained. Or another word for that is we're operating in our flesh. Because when people said that too, I was kind of thrown off because I didn't really know what operating in my flesh mean. But I'm going to tell you about that. Our souls are always in check. We've always got to check in with our soulish realm to see if our emotions are off the, the, the target. So here's our little test I want us to take. You got your pencils and papers? Let me see a yes. Let me see a raised hand in the chat. Let me see if you're with me. I want you to have your pencils and papers. What is the difference between the flesh and the spirit? We're talking about being pruned because these two words take certain meaning when opposed in scripture. The flesh represents all that is natural, earthly, and human. So we're not talking about this body meat. We're not talking about what this, this body that we live in. While the spirit signifies all that is supernatural, heavenly, and divine. One more time. The flesh, the flesh when you hear, when, when we see in scripture, when we're talking about the flesh, we're talking about all that is natural in this world. Everything that is happening around us. Earthly things. And human human things, things that we do every day, the way we think, the way we move, while the spirit signifies our supernatural help, our heavenly assistance, the divine realm of this world that we live in. So here we go. Are you ready out there? Mm. <laughs> okay. Here we're going to do a test. And I want you to rate yourself on a scale from 1 to 10. 1 being, uh, I tell y'all, and 10 and ten being, yeah, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm tight in that area. 1 being, uh, uh, 5 being, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm on my way. So a scale to 1 to 10. Rate yourself on the fruit of love. Now, don't be thinking a whole long time and, and doing a thesis. Rate yourself on the fruit of love. How we doing in that area? Rate yourself on the fruit of joy. Ooh, yeah, we got that joy working for us down here in my soul. We got that joy. But this is when we are doing good and when we are going through some tough times. How is that joy? Rate yourself on your peace. How are we operating with peace? How's that working for us? What about patience? On a scale of 1 to 10, how's that patience working for you? Once again, you don't have to put it in the chat. This is just self-reflective. I want you to look at this and think about this. How are we with kindness? On a scale to 1 to 10, goodness. How are we working with that goodness? Not how somebody's being good to you. How are you operating in the goodness of God? What about the fruit of faithfulness? How are we working with the fruit of faithfulness all the time? Good times, not so good times. Challenging times. Depressing times. How are we working with faithfulness? Gentleness. And here's a biggie. Self-control. On a scale to one, from one to ten, excuse me, on a scale from one to ten, where do you line up with this fruit? Because where we line up with this fruit is a huge indication of how we are remaining connected to the vine. When we're being pruned, how we are pushing forth in the things that we need to. How we, when I say pushing forth in the things that we need to, pushing forth in prayer, 
pushing forth in, 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 in boundaries that keep us protected. How do I know? How do I know if I'm walking in the spirit? I need to know that. I need to understand that. How do I know if I'm walking everyday life out that is pleasing to the Father? How do I know? How do I know? Here's some ways we can know. The Spirit of God will always agree with the Word of God. So when you're making decisions and you go to the Word about those decisions because all 60, all of those books have an answer for anything that we will ever face in life because God would not leave us on this earth without the instructions that he that we need for the life he's already created for us. Let me say that again. God would not put us in this earth, would not leave us in this earth without instructions. And we know that's an acronym for the Bible. So basic instructions before leaving earth. We know that the Spirit of God will always agree with the Word of God. So study God's Word. God has a word on anxiety. God has a word on patience. God has a word on, 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 on um, anger. All of the emotions that we experience in our soulish realm, excuse me, <clears throat> all of the emotions that we experience, you and I experience in our soulish realm, there is a word for it. And you don't have to know where it is. You can turn to your concordance in the back of your good study Bible and you will see the word anger and all of the scriptures related to that. You will see the word disappointment and all of whatever it is, there is an answer already for it in the word of God. The, the, the walking in the spirit always leads us to freedom and not bondage. So if you're trying to decide about this guy, or this girl and that you really like them and that like you know that th this is the it factor for you then you gotta go to the word and see what a godly woman looks like what a godly man looks like what a person looks like who you want to spend the rest of your loving life with there's an answer for that the spirit will always lead us the spirit of god which is walking in the spirit walking in the holy spirit that lives on the inside of us walking in the fruit of god that you just did an assessment for that you are able to see where you are in those areas and why you are going in a pruning season so that you can perfect those areas start every day start every single day with god in prayer and I know you guys do that, but just start every day. You don't have to have a long dissertation, but acknowledge the fact that you open your eyes this great Saturday morning and we were able to put our feet down on our own or with assistance and that we were able to be in this mind of a believer to get on a, 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 a um, YouTube, um, Facebook this morning and be able to, to want to hear more about the life we live. Read and meditate scripture and remember always that we are all ambassadors for Christ and everything that we face in our personal and in our, our lives out in the streets and the things that we're doing is so that we represent, we bring glory to our heavenly father. So remember in pruning season, when things are difficult, it's only to make you better, not bitter. It's only to help you grow right Go, grow, grow straight, be perfected in the things that God already knows, right, that you're going to need in this life. So, Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for our social, our societal, our emotional, working on our soulish realm, strengthening it with the Word of God living. We thank you that those that are under the sound of your voice are if they are not believers, that they know it's really simple. You don't, you don't make this life hard. Is that we just ask Jesus, Lord, to come into our hearts and take control of our lives. That we commit 
to making changes in the way that we are living our lives and that we join up with faith-filled churches that are teaching the word so that we can be trained and understand some of these terms that we hear in life because as we sit under the word of a teacher of the word then we get an understanding of how to live this life father we just thank you right now for safety as we go forward happy juneteenth celebrate today celebrate the freedom that our ancestors walked through th with, with their lives in prayer and in faith they came to this country and made a life for you and i to be free today and not free ish free in our minds free in our hearts and free in our souls so whatever you do today remember Remember, we faith it to make it. We faith it to make it. God bless you guys. Have a great day out there in these streets.